Situated on the A6, two miles north of Belper, is the Derbyshire village of Ambergate, where the River Amber joins the River Derwent. Ambergate is notable for its railway heritage and telephone exchange. It has an active community life, particularly centred on the school, pubs, churches, sports clubs and annual village carnival. The Hurt Arms beside the A6 is a popular pub in the village. Well, today is Bank Holiday Monday, and it's also the last day in August. And I've come to Ambergate. Now, there's a clue in the name there. Although I'm doing another walk in the Derwent Valley, which is within the Amber Valley District of Derbyshire, Ambergate marks the point where the River Amber flows into the River Derwent. So, that hopefully makes it a bit less confusing. <laughs> anyway, the walk I'm doing today is one I've actually done once before and I remember it was really nice, so I'm looking forward to doing it again today. Walking back down the A6 for a short way, I turned right along Holly Lane next to the cricket ground. Soon I crossed over the river, and could see where the River Amber joins the Derwent. At the other side of the bridge, the lane swung left, but my way was right along a track through the woodlands. Actually feeling more like how August should be now. <coughs> it started off chilly this morning, <coughs> first thing. But now it's actually warmed up, so much more how I'd expect August to be. I'll dispense with this for the time being. Oh. <sighs> much more like how summer should be. I kept right at the fork to continue along the main track and soon passed an old derelict house. It's fascinating. It's a shame that buildings get left in this condition, but at the same time, I do find it really interesting. Just passed a lady, actually, and she said to me that she remembers a guy that lived in this building about 15 to 20 years ago. So. It's been in this condition since he moved out, basically. I wonder if anybody one day will do anything with this. It's a shame if they have to tear it down, you know, when it gets to the state where it's just beyond repair, but it'd be lovely to think that somebody sometime could, could fix this and do something with it. Look at this. That's a real relic, this is. An old radio with a tape deck. God. Look who left this here and how long it's been here. Well, it's clearly been here a long time. Well, not that it'd be worth much now anyway, sadly. Beyond the house, I came across more derelict buildings. These are the ruins of Oakhurst Mills, which were once a wire spinning works. A little further on, the track entered more woodland. I was now in Shining Cliff Woods, an ancient woodland which was part of the Royal Hunting Forest of Duffield Frith and is now designated a site of special scientific interest. 
Before long, I reached the junction and took a path climbing up to the left, marked by a finger post for Alder Walsley and Watt Stanwell. Upon reaching a gate, I exited the woods to walk into open country. My path was now taking me through Alder Wasley Park. Words couldn't describe the views around me and across to the Derwent Valley. Well, would you look at that? It's when I'm out here in places like this that I consider myself very lucky to live where I do. I only live a few miles up the road from here and it's, this is on my doorstep, it's wonderful. I feel so lucky to, to live here. Look at this, I mean, just look at it. I mean, you can't fault this sort of countryside, can you? It's wonderful, all around me. My path eventually merged with a track, where I joined another section of the Midshires Way. As I passed a memorial cross, I was approaching Alder Wasley Village, and could just see through the trees Alder Wasley Hall, now a school. I climbed a stile onto Hig Lane and walked through the village, which in the Middle Ages was a manor within Duffield Frith. The name Alder Wasley originates from the Old English for clearing near alluvial land growing with alders. Aside from the school, the village is made up of farms, houses, cottages, a church, village hall and the excellent pub the Bear Inn, all of which are scattered among the hills. Walking along New Road, I turned off left through a gate into a field, continuing with the Midshires Way.
Wow. When I came to a junction of paths at a signpost, I turned left, leaving the Midshire's way again for now, to head southwest. Eventually I came out onto a lane to meet a crossroads. Going directly ahead onto Pendleton Lane, I immediately turned left to walk along a private drive where there was a public right of way. The drive soon bore left, but the right of way continued straight ahead along a grassy path beside a stone wall. Passing through Kennel Wood, I soon re-emerged onto Hig Lane and climbed back over the stile I had earlier climbed to follow the Midshire's way again, but in the opposite direction this time. Passing the Memorial Cross again, I climbed gradually, but now staying with the Midshire's way. As I approached the plantation, I stopped at a beautifully carved seating area. <sighs> well, it would be very rude of me not to take advantage of this very strategically placed, very authentic looking bench. Just sit here and take in the view. Look at that. Just fantastic. I could just sit here all day and look at that view. But I better move on, otherwise I'm going to get far too comfortable here. Moving on, I headed southwest, still following the Midshire's way. I soon entered another part of Shining Cliff Woods. As the path started to descend, I turned sharply left, leaving the Midshire's way again. Oh. 
I'm sure these are here for a reason. Continuing east, I eventually saw a gritstone rock face above me to my left, which gives its name to the woods. Further on, I reached Shining Cliff Hostel. What a fantastic location for a youth hostel. Hidden right high up here in the woods in the middle of nowhere. Fantastic. Well, I see that Shining Cliff Hostel is an independent hostel, but I'm sure that many years ago this belonged to the YHA. I could be wrong there, but I think it probably did at one time. Below the hostel, the path swung sharply to the right, dropping down to a small lake. Lovely to see a bit of water, especially when I know it's near the end of my walk. That dog's certainly enjoying the water anyway. OK, well, it's only a short distance through the woods now, and I'll be back in Ambergate. Following the path heading east from the lake, I joined a track, which eventually led me back to Holly Lane where I crossed over the River Derwent to walk back into Ambergate. OK, that's me back at Ambergate, so... Really nice walk again. Just an eight mile drive home now. 